Welcome friends, August the 30th. August was a blast, absolutely. So many new things became possible all of a sudden. The structure has become so much more weakened and we had some really excellent moves in the right direction. Just think of what happened in Arizona. Trump and RFK bonding that is huge that cannot be underestimated this is just on the political spectrum this is just one tiny aspect overall of reality it is nice to see that things move in the right direction but that's not the main thing the main thing is holding the energy these are chaotic tumultuous and intense times and it gets ever more intense believe me the next two three months and that's what the astrology will show which i have planned up for you will get really to the core of intensity okay let's get started with some basics so this month in september the moon's orbit which is elliptical hmm? There's one place where it's closest to Earth and one where it's farthest away. So this is naturally the main orientation of the Moon in space, which shifts all the time over actually nine years. This whole structure of closest and farthest moves once around the zodiac. Uh, really, um, I mean, it's it couldn't be more brilliantly designed. There seems to be really some intelligence behind the Moon's particular movement in space which is extremely complex for example just a little bit to get that understanding of every astrology program half of the size of the program is for calculating the moon the rest is for all the other planets and houses and whatnot that shows you the most exquisite placements the moon has around earth okay go around with this <laughs> So the moon's orbital orientation in space is exactly aligned with its nodal axis this month. The nodes is where the moons and the sun and earth's plane meet. That means the moon's orbit cuts through the plane which you can think of uh, if you were drawing a line over a year where the sun is in the ha in the sky in the heavens you would get a, a a flat plane and that is the moon um the moon is um crossing that twice a month once up and once down on its 28 day orbit and when it comes up that's what's called the lunar north node and that is where evolution is heading towards super important point in every birth chart one of the key points to look at this is really the dynamic motion of uh, in astrology are the nodes that's i sometimes say this is the rocket which is um boosting through your chart coming from the south node where the moon then descends again down into the southern hemisphere so to say and it is interesting we have this polarization all through the the universe actually this is one of the rarely known and heard things that as chaotic and um random the universe might look and um, with the dis, uh, distribution of stars and galaxies the north south um orientation is pretty much from what i have heard the same throughout the whole universe there's an upside and there's a downside hmm? and it's actually always naturally personal perception so if you live in australia what is down down there is actually up there <laughs> you get the picture anyway but to say these are the points where the moon directly interacts with sun and earth with the higher consciousness of the sun and the lower frequency of the earth you could say it is this polarity of spirit and body if you want that is probably the best way to see it and the moon brings in the soul brings in the 
motion of change it a constant adaption it is um, the, actually the, the the movie uh, project really that's what the moon also could be looked at so the moon makes two eclipses this coming month that's exactly what it means when um the there's full and new moon in these two spots of the lunar nodes that is why also in the eastern traditions Rahu and Ketu are the dragon's head and the dragon's tail. That is where the moon gets eaten, swallowed by the sun and where on the other side during full moon the moon is swallowed by earth's shadow. Hmm? I could go really deep into the meaning of that. Anyway, but because now those two points where the moon is closest and farthest from earth this month are matching with the nodes that means when now the sun and the moon make full moons and new moons respectively in this period which is all uh, about the month fair roughly then they will be super full moons and super new moons meaning at in September 18 you have the chart here in small beside the moon will be at 2 degrees and 34 minutes in Aries when it is closest to earth at perigee and just now just in the actually no sorry coming up on the fifth it will be farthest away and then it will be here in Virgo still anyway we get to that so just want to say this is kind of the intensity on that level alone that these are very um particularly powerful ellipse eclipses for that the one from the 18th and the one from the 2nd of October and we will look at that uh, definitely several videos I will make to go to focus more in on that but this session I'm already showing you the chart and showing you why they are so challenging yes challenging is the right word but also it is a breakthrough time a real breakthrough time we are pushed into the waters of uh, of intensity uh, it's a white water ride and you have to really be centered within yourself and then you are at the eye in the eye of the cyclone that is important this month so if you haven't started yet yes take your time every day for 10 to 20 minutes just to sit in quiet eyes open eyes closed doesn't matter but just don't do anything else than just feeling your body taking in your environment and connecting to your heart most importantly really um getting a physical sensation from where you have your heart in your chest that location and really feel how the energy field is emanating from there we are generators and everyone which is added to this, to this generating field is pushing harder against all that low frequency stuff which has to be pushed out of our existence and that is exactly what's happening we get the big kick in the ass in a way to really come to that place where we do the right thing and get out of the um whatever procrastination hoping just to get by somewhat without having to truly engage and that is where we are everybody is really necessary in this game at this point yes and the future is positive yes it will go in the right direction but the next few months into december will be difficult i don't want to make anything out of this rather than giving you the whys hmm? why it will be difficult anyway it was interesting as i pulled this chart up uh, just before and was thinking about how i will um, start this recording i thought this was probably the 
center chart around which everything rotates in this month is when the moon will be will be closest to earth and naturally then it has its strongest impact in early aries very very special new beginnings absolutely that's what this shows at and the prior full moon you see here in the 25th 26th degree of Virgo and Pisces. Pisces will be the full moon. That will be the lunar eclipse, which I have here. Um, let me see. So this one. It's, no, it's the one before. Moon Perigee, Moon Perigee. I thought that the eclipse here. Here it is. That's actually the heliocentric chart and this one is the geocentric chart. Again, if you like to um, look at these charts more in detail, please just take a screenshot and then you can go back to it. But let's get started from today. Well, I wanted to give you a quick, quick preview of the two uh, eclipse charts. This is the first one. C26 degree of Pisces in darkening of the light. Uh, also very, very clearly a hinting at the right way to approach this. This will be a deep dive into darkness mm -hmm. and it will be all good in the end. And we have to be extremely compassionate with all those around us who are still partly in the know or fully in the unknown. This will be a rough, rough ride for these people. What's coming the next three, four months. I still refer you to the latest recording of um, Magenta Pixie, which really is well um, um, explained the different expressions we will see through the next weeks. Uh, yes, it was the Sapphire Stargate of last full moon, August 19th, but this is really the energy we are we will have to walk through and experience through the next four months. That's how I see it. Very, very good um, uh, transmission that is. I put the link again underneath. All is upside down and, in, and inside out. Hmm? Everything is inverted in this reality. That's why it will be so hard for those who have not yet adjusted. That is really the deeper reason. Yes, there will be disruptions confusion will be a big word is already a big word and um, disorientation yes um there's people now in traffic particularly doing very weird things stopping at green lights and things like that and just waiting for it to change not realizing it's not the color they're supposed to stop at Things like that, uh, really uh, lane changing without looking into mirrors, things like that. You have to be super, super double um, uh, attentive in traffic and only, only go out probably if you really have to. Anyway, also good advice. Anyway, let's have a, a quick preview also on the eclipse chart because this is even more um, intense. I mean, the solar eclipse of the annular eclipse of October the second which is Saros cycle 144 <laughs> a special number 2 12 times 12 as we get closer I will give you more insight about that too what that means anyway still coming I don't want to give you everything at once it would be way too much but you can see it with one quick glance this is quite a power, uh, a, a focus of power right into the eye of darkness and that is where the moon is farthest away from earth. So it will be a very small moon comparingly and naturally that's why it's an annular eclipse because the moon's body from earth's perspective is too small to fully color, uh, cover the sun's disk which in itself is interesting 
it means that yes the, sh the shadow is right um, in the center of of the of the light force but it has shrunk and is contained with a ring of light very symbolic so yes we are direct experiencing all that darkness but it already is limited and taken care of that's kind of what the message implies here with Astraea and Mercury Mercury in the lead beautiful Mercury just coming out of its superior conjunction with the Sun which means the Mercury is behind the Sun at this point from our perspective Just a few days ago, on the 28th of August, actually two days ago, Mercury turned direct, which means it was for that time being between Sun and Earth and had its inferior conjunction, which is the beginning of the synodic Mercury cycle, which is roughly four months. Every four months there's a retrograde period. The center point is when Earth, Mercury, the Sun, when they're perfectly aligned and because Earth, Mercury is in between Earth and the Sun, it appears to move backwards, hmm? naturally because of Earth's motion. But um, these are the two power points where this Mercury and the Sun are direct, directly aligned at the inferior conjunction, which was on August the 19th. Yet another amazing synchronicity there. It happened all at once. That 19th was a really power day. First of three Jupiter Saturn squares. Then we had the full moon at the same time. And then we had Mercury exactly lining up with Sun and Earth. This was a triple whammy um, when three or more exact important alignments happen at once naturally this makes the valley or the um, the amplitude of that wave even greater it's kind of they add on top of each other so this is a Himalayan peak you could say on top of that that was also the lunar return for the new world chart the July 4 1776 declaration of independence chart the moon at 27 degrees and 12 minutes Aquarius, that's what it is in that chart, was within three minutes of arc uh, uh, of that uh, full moon 27.15. Anyway, let's get on our way from here to there. Bill, let's build the story a little bit here. Hmm? So today, August the 30th, there is an exact alignment of the black moon with the lunar south node. So this is where the moon is setting through the sun-earth plane, going back down into the unconscious. That's kind of what um, south means for us who live in the north. So it's the upside down thing. So going underground, going into the hiding again. So it is kind of that moment, the last chance to really grasp and get the full image of the shadow to fully focus in on it before it again descends into the deeper layers of reality. I mean, this conjunction is still within close orb, has been for the whole last month already it's these are both moving rather slow but actually i'm saying it wrong sorry okay just a correction here let's go back a little bit so the lunar node moves backwards hmm? very important and the black moon moves forward so literally it's just the opposite happened of what I said the shadow is surfacing which makes much more sense the lunar node is going down further down showing where the moon will be setting into the earth sun field 
and the black moon in that sense has in its opposite direction moving forward in that sense has been rising as of today out of this surface which divides the below and the above literally the lakes surface where uh, you have all that mirror effect which doesn't allow you to see into the deep there's lots hiding there in that image alone so anyway today literally the shadow is rising hmm? and just about catching up with Juno who's just still a little bit ahead here the black moon will catch up to Juno okay what does that mean Juno is our kind of how we help deal support one another it is marriage companionship friendship all of that is a kind of what Juno represents standing together working as a team or as the image is giving given it's like then it needs many pillars and each of us being one pillar to hold a big roof that's kind of how it is or in other words you also could speak and think about um coherence the coherence field falling in line with one another and that's exactly what happens when you do tune into your heart you ch join that coherence field which is already there which grows stronger by the day that's why it becomes easier by the day too for people to join to come in there's a, a real magnetism there already and it is building and then there's times when um, different people do it at different times but um, that everybody sits for 20 minutes for example at the same time of the day all I mean depending on your time zone but at the same moment which could be here where i live at midday and in india it will be at midnight at the same time so you get the picture all at once and this is um creating a connectivity on a dimension on a level which we have not yet really the full consciousness of it's it's much bigger than we are and the more we are ready to go along and tune each other every day for 20 minutes into that field to download to and also to upload and to um it's an osmotic process too of um exchange and it happens in a in a natural way just nature will just do what is necessary to be done a defragmentation I also have use that word makes total sense that's what we used to do with our computers the new generation i don't think needs that anymore but to um get all the fractals and uh, of, of of one particular file stored in different locations on the hard drive get them all moved back into one position into one place which then also naturally speeds up the the retrieval of documents and such you get the picture that is literally what is happening when we do sit in silence so today is an excellent day to really start with that because it is a turning day as the shadow has just come above water approaching Juno so yes we are put into a test of how good we can handle that challenge of seeing the splinter in each other's eyes and being aware that we also are not perfect everyone has their flaws i guess we have just to really start with ourselves and the more we do that the more we can understand and love people even though they behave sometimes in weird and absurd and crazy ways but that's what real compassion is to stand above all these emotions emotions are wonderful but they can be also very dangerous as i guess everybody knows if you act out of the heat of an argument or an emotional trigger 
you overreact. That's why it is always good to, um, uh, when there's in emotions involved, don't shoot back immediately. Take it in and say, give me, I, gi I give myself a day, whatever, if it's really a strong emotional situation in a day, is certainly a good thing to keep in mind as a gauge. And that's actually one advice Gurdjieff got from his grandfather and he said he was eternally thankful for that as a small boy his grandfather told him when you get into a situation where you're challenged where you're triggered never act out of that triggered emotion but say thank you i will come back and give you the answer tomorrow hmm? and then sit with it let it simmer let it do its thing and you will come to a clear mind and you will know how to handle and you will either forgive that person for having been wrong and maybe you don't even have to go back and say something but more often than not there is something true about what you have encountered and if you truly be go honestly within yourself and uh, and inquire look from all sides you will maybe see that there was a grain of truth in what you were shown anyway techniques are important they help us to to gradually move in the right direction it's like learning a skill learning a, a trade you have to do it many times and the first time you might cut your finger and you might um whatever the piece was you have to throw it away because it really didn't turn out but the second time you already will be doing it much better and maybe your tenth time you will be almost perfect depending naturally on what it is if it's for example learning a musical instrument it takes a little longer it takes totally a little more than that but it's always the same pattern of learning methodologic meth, meth, methodically i guess that's the word i want to say so anyway um interesting that this degree here at the root of this chart when this alignment was exact the 14th degree of cancer which is the um declaration of independence sun position i found this really interesting so this is um there no this is the one i want to show you here on the side okay here you have it the new world chart house as i call it the foundation for a whole new way humanity will live on this planet 14th degree of cancer the sun here in this chart so there is something that which shows us that yes the united states of america are the center line here of this trans transition of this change that is where things get really first broken through into new territory that is the leading edge of the transformation happening in that country interesting the sun at uh, the moon pluto opposition at this moment hmm? yes this is the power of the heart hmm? which is now taking this plutonic force into its crosshair handling it integrating it understanding it pluto is a like a, a wild animal which has to be tamed you could call it hmm? it's a very dangerous animal it, it has a um, tremendous power but it also if you are able to tame it and to make it your ally then it is uh, and that's exactly how it works in shamanism hmm? you are challenged by for example nature spirits and you're allowing that challenge to come your way that's what spirit quest often is 
and then you are literally in a in a in a wrestling match with that natural spirit and if you win that spirit is be becomes your ally hmm? that's how it works in the shamanic tradition and that's exactly how it is that's exactly the path we are about about to engage on hmm? i mean with mercury just having turned direct there couldn't be a much better moment for this to kick in fully into the open for everyone to be seen that's literally what it is that is what creates all that chaos and all that upset confusion disorientation all of the above and naturally also the stress levels which go up with it when things really seriously will start breaking apart because people are no more functioning according to what they were before I mean, just even think of all the many government employees who have been the uh, kind of the loyal clerks who just that those uh, whatever Mr. Smith characters who are just serving the system because they get naturally their pay from that source. Uh, so there has to be some sort of a loyalty. But many of them are no more functioning properly either and many have been disappearing already because of all the side effects and whatnot and uh, you know all the sudden deaths of people in all places and positions who had that um, terrible medical intervention. Anyway, there's so many things happening at, the, at once and it is intensifying, it comes to a head and that head is in those next three, four months into December, mid-December, then we see definitely a change for the better, much better. It won't be, we won't be fully there yet, but a big part of the battle will have been won by mid-December. Okay, so you see that's really the other side of what's happening today. So this is 8.18 8, p.m. exact universal time. And then two hours later, three hours later, we have this other alignment of the sun aligning with 2002 AW197. Let me explain. This is a Cooper Belt object which was discovered in 2002 and that has been the designation the kind of the, they give them a, a number whatever and a, a letter combination to identify them before they are getting named now here it is 2002 AW197 is substantially big body 800 2000 kilometers in diameter and it still has not give, been given a name that is very particular about it bodies of that size and that is a really substantial size they are usually given names within a few years or at the most within 10 years or so this is 22 years still since shows something particular about this body's nature character meaning it's all about stealth <laughs> stealth and working from the background the art of stratagem the art of war aikido absorbing the momentum which is brought against you receiving it and reframing it remodeling it like a boomerang and give it back in a without you really having to invest any energy you're just deflecting it and having it do its work as you have transformed it into something else in that sense you just pick up the energy and move it the other way again. This happens within a few hours. So this is really the 
I mean, it's always fractals tell the whole story. Hmm? It is true, astrology particularly. You just have to really look at one chart. Yes, I'm always showing you these many charts. Uh, that's who I am. I have Gemini in my seventh house cusp. I like multiples of everything. <laughs> richness, abundance, it's kind of what Jupiter in that sign in the moment is this whole year. We have this mental abundance of images and pictures and, and um, forms and shapes which can be definitely over, be overboarding and then it becomes a, a distraction and it becomes also a an interference with something way more basic. Anyway, there's all these many um, qualities each sign has, but there's also dangers in it. So it's always good to see both and um, then know what you have to guard against and what you can reap as a benefit, so to say. So let's just go back here quickly and just look at these two single charts um, in the touchdown point of the shadow, really, we could call this chart. We have that two degrees, three degrees Taurus rising. And as we look, I saw the Cancer root. And again, the sign Cancer is... Um, the Akashic records, it is the memory banks, the vaults, cancer is the sign which has most direct access to the bigger underground, that 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 huge network of 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 of, of roots in all directions like the forest. So it has it's and it pulls out all the the nutrients and the hidden resources. The moon sign after all hmm? how about that hmm? so there's definitely a direct um, activation of the unconscious in a collective way happening today particularly with that moon pluto opposition i mean this in leo i should emphasize hmm? leo the sign of release and then end of um conflagration and um, it's it's combustion that's the word i'm looking for combustion it just i really like um uh, rudyard uh, who d gives names for each 15 degree of the zodiac combustion and release are the two words here for leo energy the perfect sextile to venus just having entered Libra, its own sign. Actually, as an evening star, it is most auspiciously placed in Libra because this is resonating with the evening star phase, which we are in, as you probably know. If you early evening, just after sunset, go to the look towards the west and you will see Venus now already uh, quite bright and over the next few months Venus will really grow high into the sky probably around Christmas or so she was, she will be the dominant star in the evening so it already tells you also the story that yes resolution is on its way Venus is a very very big hope it is our neighboring planet and it is hosting higher dimensional beings um, who are able to handle the climate on Venus because they're not fully physical beings. They are able to phase in and phase out. Tor Han is one of the char characters, or Valiant Tor. You could Google those two names. They came from Venus and have been on Earth or in the 1950s. So Venus in Libra and approaching that dark configuration here. So Venus is really that 
a heartfelt intention also to embrace all that is there and in the embrace you are transforming it exactly as aw197 is suggesting it is that ability to absorb and to transform now see two degrees uh, three degrees leo um taurus sorry and a few hours later it's the third degree of cancer in a perfect sextile those two events and now <laughs> this is um this is really the cherry on the top i mean there's many more to come 2706 that is the moon in the u.s american chart the declaration of independence new world chart 2712 and i guess i said it already that is where the full moon was last month 2715 and then you look at uranus here in this chart i mean it doesn't end here yet <laughs> 2715 the moon uh, Uranus is actually stationing in two days. That means it's already pretty much at standstill, which is um, the planet's most powerful phase around those two times every year when they change direction. They move forward for so long and then slower and slower and come to a moment when they're totally in standstill and then start slowly moving the other way again due to Earth's motion really. Uranus doesn't do really anything it's just our perception of it and that's always very boils down to it's our perception of things which are our truth hmm? that's why there's so much fighting about truth because everybody has their own way of seeing reality in that sense has their own truth regardless if this is a truly coming from within or if it's um, a kind of superseded doesn't matter at this point but it is everybody is looking from a slightly different angle a perfect 90 degree aspect hmm? so this is a powerful powerful chart hmm? very uranian Ur uranus is coming out of the 12th house here hmm? and then we have Gemini intercepted so all that mental turmoil is kind of um, cocooned within this particular charts 12th house I mean it's it's kind of a, and, and an interception a, a, that cocoon type of energy I also like to compare it to a pressure cooker hmm? you have a pressure cooker there in that house hmm? and that content is really being worked on pushed together so interactive each with, with itself in a way hmm? being pushed into a, <laughs> a retreat to look within in that sense that's another way of seeing these interceptions very very um telling in each chart where you have an interception in which house that's where the most personal transformation is really taking place that is the field of of, um, of worldly interaction so just these two charts alone uh, are <laughs> It's just amazing again naturally the moon just a couple degrees here ahead still in opposition to pluto in a separating opposition which means it's already come out of the most intense phase of direct confrontation and that was already the case here you see 138 so it's already having experienced that most difficult moment of directly facing something and this now already in the processing phase of releasing that is what happens after the 180 degree aspect is exact is after full moon so to say the release phase 
Okay, let's see what I have lined up here for you. And probably won't do the whole lineup of charts today, but at least through the next few days. Uranus turns retrograde September 1st. And again, you have 2754 Sagittarius rising this time. If you just go back one chart, we had the 27, 28 degree axis here, 27, 28 here. Mm -hmm. And now when Uranus is having its direction change, which means it's the moment when, because we see Uranus differently, because of us Earthlings now experiencing it to move backwards, hmm? it has a different effect on us. That is the moment when you literally get that feeling of this energy um, not more, no more so much going outward but inward. That is again the forward and backward. Uh, forward is outward, backward is inward in that sense. So it is a, a, a consolidation phase of sitting with something and let it come to its own truth kind of processing hmm? particularly with mercury this is always a super interesting one as we just had from the 5th to the 28th of august we had mercury retrograde and now in this chart here where you have Uranus 2715 you see makes many many angles with all kinds of planets with the um, galactic center here particularly hmm? the galactic center rising Mars at the seventh house cusps yeah there will, will be lots of um, conflicts coming fully into the open that is what Mars at the seventh house cusp means bring it on guy hmm? throwing the kind of the, the white glove of challenging someone for a duel that's kind of the energy I see here in this chart bring it on huh? let's see where we go with this so it's kind of a it's it's a it's an excitement in it too and the more we are able to contain that excitement and channel it in the right direction by our ability to keep the inner calm and not act, acting out emotionally as I just before was getting deeper into but you see the moon conjunct mercury beautiful just having passed here mercury exactly mercury just having turned into forward moving again also in the 28th this is a real real gift this allows everyone depending on naturally the state the place they are to have kind of a union of emotion with with a mental image they're in the same place you, you look at it from the same angle and you start seeing a, a union and it's also kind of understanding emotions it is definitely going in that direction in Leo and this is hexagram 49 revolution which really implies that um, natural process of 
patterns on the tiger's fur changing, shifting, that's where the image comes from. It's different colors of the leaves they, as the seasons change and then some moment comes when the leaves are dropped. All of that, that those natural changes and prog progressions are allowed and understood in this phase of the zodiac revolution actually it is revolutions on the other side i'm sorry but it resonates definitely with that it's actually the resonance here is hexagram four sorry i was wrong hexagram four um youthful ignorance it's called youthful ignorance it is the ability to play to do anything you can think of and 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 try it out and find is that something for me or not and naturally this is kind of in the same frequency band i would say as um as a revolution it is a revolution to in its own right and it is amazing these polarized um, hexagrams how they in one way or other even though they're on opposite ends of the spectrum they have something profoundly in common something i could um, again again go on eventually i think i will write a book about that <laughs> yeah give me time maybe in a few decades yes in a few decades you heard right i still will be here so will many of you too with all what will be revealed in the next few years yeah our whole reality will shift those who are meant to stay here and help build the new world will be for much longer okay uranus starting to move retrograde and then guess what this is uh, 3 3 17 pm 3 18 pm exact 11 57 that is something like eight hours later we have i guess it's eight hours pm yes it's both pm pluto changing back into capricorn really really big one this one is pluto here 29 59 59 right one second before it still was reading zero zero Aquarius that's how I'm timing these charts using the this wonderful feature this solar fire program has to move charts in increments of as small as one second to get the right exact moment when something is exact So this is a big one, I say. Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. Just last year and this year it had two episodes of a few weeks to a few months where it was already exploring a bit into the Aquarian field. Now it comes back once more, one final time, has a little dip into this old energy getting back into all the deep dark convulsions of this Capricornian empire I would say and as we know I mean the, uh, the American chart again has Pluto in this um, earth sign of structure and of power very worldly power so you get the picture we are diving back into all of that once more in a fast and furious way i would say that's what it will be um it will be till november 19 not too long and the midpoint is october the 11th that is when pluto will start moving forward again so it goes backwards for a bit more than a month and then again forward a bit more than a month into november 19 to finally come fully into aquarian frequency november 19 a day to mark on the calendar 
and from there on it will be in Aquarius till 2043 or something for many many years to come anyway so what does this chart tell us what will this time be about as this is a birth chart for this last episode Pluto has in Capricorn well you can see it immediately with the Sun right at the midnight point and Earth at the center of the heavens happens at, at exact local midnight in Greenwich on the zero meridian this is grounding this energy deep into earth and really giving it a very strong foothold so this will be a a very impactful time you could call it hmm? the moon still coming out of a conjunction with mercury now in hexagram 56 the wanderer fire on the mountain which is the ability to move on and move on and and it's it's the it's the the gypsy energy of traveling far and experiencing all kinds of different cultures realities personalities being on the move very very interesting so it is definitely showing that nothing really will stay in one place everything is in motion we have to adjust to a fast changing reality that's what it basically means Pluto by the way at the cusp of the eighth house here and 2742 as you probably can see here 2733 that is the American Pluto so it is definitely has to do with that nation again in very very big ways interesting the 11th uh, 12th degree of cancer rising here again we have the cancer rising theme going on you see we just had it here already when the Sun today conjuncts AW197 kind of um, giving this power of using this little Cooper Belt objects intensity of of skill I guess it is really a great skill this this little AW197 brings in the skill to pick up that curveball and redirect it in a way which makes the best out of the situation cancer again yes cancer will be with us for a while cancer is the energy also and Pluto turns direct I found yeah well no it's it's not this chart it's another one but um it's over let me see I thought there was another chart of strong cancer maybe not but it is a, a a pair which often shows up okay but this is powerful the Sun right at the midnight point really bringing that energy that very physical and kind of trying to get the final hold on, on, on keeping reality the way it is that's kind of one side we will see that's why it will be the clash of the Titans in a way what we will see in the next six weeks eight weeks or how however many what what would that be about 10 weeks huh, from yes September 4 to November 19 about 10 11 weeks I would say okay 
Then on the 5th of November, there's a Venus occultation. That's something rare. It doesn't happen very often that a planet moves behind the Moon from Earth's perspective. So it is nat naturally during a Moon-Venus conjunction and Venus as seen from Earth from a particular location will disappear behind the Moon. And you probably can easily see that's more to the story than just that. Venus being swallowed by the Moon just short after the Moon had traversed the South Node and the Black Moon literally been here where it is farthest from Earth on September the 5th this will be. That is the antipode to the chart we started with, the 18th, which is then when it will be closest. So also all this something like um, 14 days in between actually. So this speaks of an initiation on the horizon for everyone else, a deep emotional journey to some dark places. And it's all about working on what has been spoiled. That is the hexagram. All that is happening in between 352, 30, I guess it is exact, 352.30 and um, 9 degrees and 30 minutes, hexagram 18, working on what has been spoiled, going back to what has gone wrong and rectifying it, that is the base note here. You won't be surprised about this degree by now, hmm? 2752. You see really it all links around the American nation's evolution. That's why it is so important to hold them the ground energetically, be there in spirit with that challenged nation and see that once the path has been cleared, we all easily can follow, the whole world will follow in that direction. It makes sense, it's obvious, because it will be such a, an enormous breakthrough in the right direction that all other problems will be able to be resolved. It's like a bridgehead in, in the ocean, in the tumultuous motion of of wild waters, a, a pillar has been planted. That's how it will feel, and from there on, all the other situations will be much easier to be contained. Very interesting the 22 degree Libra Aries axis here. That is, you see again, resonating with this chart. It's uncanny how everything seems to be amplifying all these charts I'm sh I showed you, all these particular charts of of celestial alignments in the now, in this present week you could say, how they interact and interlock with this base chart of the United States, really showing that Yes, there is some really intense transformation going on down there on all levels, which naturally nobody will really report about uh, because this is not something news propaganda channels are interested in. Anyway, so we just have to develop our sixth sense to know what's going on really. That is, um, I guess, the challenge aside from um, discernment, which we certainly also are learning and getting better at by the day. So it is the Juno Chiron axis here. Hmm? See, Chiron. Yes, um, 
the United States served as a Chiron return three times in April was the first as I showed you in one of my last recordings and December the 24th actually will be the second exact touch and the third one will be somewhere in um, February I guess 2025 or April somewhere around that so it is that whole time period between April 24 April 2024 and whatever April 2025 where these three exact returns happen which no surprise here this is the core phase of transformation of doing the right thing seeing what is wrong what is out of order getting the right diagnose which is really all that is critical in any treatment of a patient once we know exactly we are 100 percent sure what's wrong then the rest is usually easy because from there on there's a, a very clear-cut path towards embedment and healing so that is really the time of allowing to see the mess allowing to really take account and inventory and all of that and know what we are dealing with the rest will be easy and this is um uh, this chart is clearly showing that is um we have to go there with our heart and our emotion and really embrace all that dark stuff and still be bonding together loving each other knowing that we need each other we are here for each other it's this beautiful story um of heaven and hell so it's the same situation these poor people have are no more able to really um bend their elbows hmm? so they have stiff elbows hell and heaven hmm? what is the difference in hell they're all starving to death because they cannot feed themselves they they, they, they cannot reach their mouths they're trying hard everywhere and and what not and in heaven is the same situation and people are feeding each other hmm? yes they all have still st stiff elbows but because they have understood something the others haven't they're in heaven and the others in hell it's simple as that that's a uh, kind of the the long story short you could say hmm? so that is the 5th of september all coming up in these next few days it's really the tide is turning in a much more rough direction now we are ready for it i mean we, we all came here with that in mind even though you might not remember at some point you will will come yes there's no accidents everything is exactly working out the way it is meant to work out that is what astrology is really wonderful at it shows everything makes sense hmm? okay so Venus occultation 9 a.m. and around 3 p.m. six hours later the moon is farthest away from earth at in the 12th degree of Libra some of you might now ask what is the difference between the black moon here which I have been saying yes is the farthest place the moon is away and now all of a sudden it's is at 11 degrees well the thing is this that this is the central axis of the moon's present orbit however it's constantly wobbling forth and back actually within one um, lunar period 28 days this can wobble 20 30 degrees in either direction it's kind of like a, always in motion and sometimes the moon is exactly at that point where it is farthest away and it is matching that center point and more often than not it's not exactly at the center point of this 
osculating motion. This uh, again shows the, the complexity of the moon's orbit. With okay, this is now when the moon is farthest away from Earth. Hmm? Which I find a moment when which is super important collectively to understand where we are going in the last few months I have shown them in my readings here and shown you the resonance. So this time it will be the second degree of um, Scorpio here in midheaven naturally in a perfect angle to Pluto again but also Homia is here. Homia most of all is the one which is restructuring, rebuilding and um, kind of having that deep knowing of how things are best implemented, implemented and working with each other in a new way, in a new fashion. The 27th degree of Sag again, hmm? galactic center, which we just had, and then, okay, I'm going the wrong direction here. Yeah, this is the moon's apogee of the 5th of September, and here we have Uranus station, Let's see. Again, two moments in time which interlock with each other two energies which are bonding and working together so this just shows that this is when this Uranian energy is falling to starting to grip the Sun approaching it your position is sad and yes it is um and naturally the Sun also approaching here the nodal axis and the black moon all of that so this is kind of the direction we are going in these next four weeks and then yes um, I jump here a little bit ahead this is then the lunar partial eclipse of the 18th Okay, something is um, yeah, you're right. It is um, Saros series 118. I know um, I was confused for a second. Okay, that is when the lunar eclipse is exact. Um, I did um, also print here the heliocentric moment for this peak of the eclipse I did it because of this I want to show you that Uranus again is in a perfect angle so expect that intensity that unpredictability to be the theme ongoing for a while there was a Mars Uranus conjunction just a few days prior around the 15th 16th very explosive energies naturally but this is more kind of the the fuel in the background this is the music we are dancing to and then how we express this in this three four dimensional reality is mostly showing up through the geocentric alignments which we have here so you see geocentric it is um a what would that be about a 40 degree angle yes just again the 11th 12th degree here I guess we had that before here with the moon 12th degree so all these same degrees naturally make a, a resonance 12th degree um, Libra and 12th degree Taurus both Venus signs mm -hmm. 
resonance. Okay, I guess I have kept you long enough here on the edge of the seat and I will stop right here just show you quickly what else I have lined up for my next session or maybe soon coming Sirius Pluto conjunction right before the solar eclipse of October the 2nd gives you a little hint Sirius and Pluto are very particular characters in Greek mythology actually in Greek it's Hades who is called Pluto in the Roman system so Hades and Persephone Hades stole Persephone's daughter so just sit, let you sit with this we will continue i really want to keep it more concise powerful powerful times and it is important to really do your homework and be with yourself every day for a while be able to draw a line between the crazy world out there and your inner peace we need it it's super important and it is what feeds what amplifies what accelerates the transformation pushes us through faster through this thicket of thorns and rough edges scrambles of stones of all of that it's it's um yes it will be something and we will be definitely uh, a little scarred here and there when we come out on the other end but most likely still intact and able to heal within not too much time wonderful to have you all here take care and again enjoy in the end it's the adventure we have come here for thank you for being here